Hello everyone and welcome to this video. In this one, we are going to talk about macros. And macros are really brothers or sisters to functions. Here we have the documentation for function opened and if you go down, you will see a link saying that you can see macro. Okay, let's click on this. And it is going to say start recording a macro for a later invocation as a command. You can see that it really looks like a function. We say macro, we say name, we pass arguments. Inside the body of the macro, we do something and we end our macro with end macro here. This is just a syntax you have to follow. Now, if you go down, you see C macro VS function section below for differences between C make macros and functions. So let's click on that. And it is going to say that it's very similar to function, but there are a few important differences. Now in a function, the parameters that you pass to the function are true variables in the usual CMake sense. So they are variables, you can dereference them, you can test against them, you can do all kinds of crazy things. In a macro, they are not, they are string replacements, much like the C or C++ preprocessor would do with a macro. This has a number of consequences as explained in this section you can read about, but I showed you this in hope that you can see that the parameters you pass to the macro are not true variables and you shouldn't really think of them as variables. They are placeholders and CMake is going to replace them in as a string replacements. Now that you have this in the back of your mind, let's look at a few examples. Another thing you should know is that because a macro is basically a text replacement, it's not going to introduce a new variable scope. Again, that's something you need to keep in your mind. Here we have an example of a macro. Again, it is the same thing we had for the function, but now it is a macro because I want to highlight the differences. It is going to take two parameters and inside the macro, we set new values in our variables, exactly the same thing we did in our functions. We set up two global variables, we print them out, then we call our macro, notice that we call it exactly like we call a function, and then we try to print our data after we call the macro. But notice in the body of the macro, we are not passing parent scope because we don't need to do that. A macro is already operating in the global scope. What is going to happen when you call a macro? The CMake runtime is basically going to strip off this function call. Okay, it is going to copy the code in the body of the macro, it is going to put it in here, and it is going to replace the places where you have the parameters with the new variables. It's basically going to say set global var one. It is basically going to do that and modify that global variable immediately. And we don't have a need for the parent scope thing with macros. For this reason, Macros are really confusing. People are going to see them called and they will think that you are introducing a new variable scope. So don't really use macros unless you have a good reason to do so. Now that we have seen the example, we can also do our increment variable function. Notice that because the variable is being modified in the global scope, we don't need to do the setting we did here. Again, the purpose of this setting we did for the function was to pass this new value back to the global scope because this was a copy. Now this is not a copy, it is living in the global scope, so we don't need to do this thing. This is something you need to understand. The rest is really the same. It looks like we are dereferencing a variable, but this is basically telling CMake, please do string replacement for this thing I'm doing here. And var is not a variable in a true sense. It is a placeholder and you can't use it everywhere where a variable is expected. If you do that, you will be setting yourself up for disaster. Now that you know this, we can head over to Visual Studio Code and play with us. The code is really the same as we saw in the lecture for functions. So let's go up to Visual Studio Code, look at macros, see make, and I see what we can cook up here. Let's comment out the increment variable function call that we do, and we will uncomment the first modify global variables macro. Again, it is a macro, you see macro on top and the macro here, the body is here, but we are basically saying when we call the macro, okay, don't call like you call a function. What CMake is basically going to do, it is going to copy the code in the body of the macro. It is going to take out our call we do here, Okay, and it is going to replace the settings we do here 
with global var1 and global var2. Basically something like this, global var1 uh, and global var2. This is what it's going to do. Okay, and it is going to run and give you the value. This is going to be what you get. Let's run this and see actually if it works. So uh, we can uh, clear and run our script, which is going to be number seven in this case. And you see new value because we are basically setting a new value to the global variable, but a macro is basically going to do the same thing we do here. Let's hit control Z a couple of times and bring back our macro if we can get there. Let's run with this and see that we get the same result. And we should get a new value here because a macro is basically textual string replacement that we do here. Now that you know this, let's go back to the second example, which is going to be incrementing a variable. So we increment the variable ourselves, uh, something like this. Again, we don't need this line here because the macro is already operating in the global scope. The rest is like we did in the functions. If you want to access the parameter, you dereference once. If you want to access the value in the parameter, you dereference twice, like we did before. But with macros, these are not true variables, okay? Okay, keep this in mind. Don't use them where variables are expected because these are basically instructions to CMake to do string replacement. I hope this is super clear. Let's run this and it should increment our variable. It's going to say one, two. If we enable our loop, it is going to do exactly what we expect because it is operating in the global scope. Let's do that. We should see four as the final value. And this is really all I had to share with you. I hope you found this video useful. I am stopping here and I will see you next time.